How to Choose a Microphone, Part 2. Think about uh, the kind of venues you're likely to play. If you play small venues with a naturally good acoustic, then any of the mics will do, and you'll probably head towards condensers if they suit your voice. Naturally, the more electronic, the more the louder we get with guitars and and the mic drums and so on and so forth, you tend to want to play bigger places. You wouldn't fit all that on in someone's front room. So the venue kind of goes with music a bit. If you're in larger venues, if you, uh, if you run around a lot, if you throw yourself into the audience, then all these things are considerations. So think about that. Think of the, the kind of venues you play. Is there really loud on stage volume? Condensers might not be right for you. They may, but they might not. There may be no point because you might not hear that detail in the voice. So you might like the slightly uh, shut-in um, dynamic sound. Probably quite important, the louder it gets, is uh, cardioid or hypercardioid, and your positioning of the monitors. need to consider that. These are sort of... They're important. I mean, the, the main sound, I think, is probably most important, but the engineers might not agree. Uh, wireless mic... We've talked about those, I think, before. The capsule's the same, gives you the freedom. Absolute quality might not be quite the same. You've got batteries to change, they keep running out. You use rechargeables, but then all the rest of it uh, is a bit more faff. Uh, do you have an engineer? Some of the problems caused by mics and feedbacks, you've got someone on the desk who's awake, then they can sort that. Also, the engineer might have ideas about the sound and the difficulties and the intelligibility or how it works that you don't really have because they've got a slight you might have an artist's view of it wanting everything wanting this but they're saying well yeah that's lovely but it actually doesn't really work in the venue because it keeps feeding back and then you can't hear you because i've got to turn you down so maybe choose an, uh, a, a hypercardioid mic so there's a little bit of that going on as well uh, depending on the venues you play so here's my advice then first of all i'd say Get to know your voice. Perhaps by listening to some of this, you've got some idea. But get to know what its vocal qualities are, whether you have a little bit of a something there, whether you tend to be a bit woofy, whether you tend to be very sibilant, just naturally, it's the way you speak, whether you tend to be quite poppy. Won't do it here because I've got a pop screen. And get to know that with some honesty. You know, not, not one's better than the other. It's just might as well get to know it. That's the way it is anyway. And maybe that will influence your choice. Check the specs and reviews. You know, get those graphs. They take a while to learn how to read. They give you some idea. Uh, reviews. I've review, I'm realizing reviews are pretty difficult because it's these things are quite subtle, and everything else in the system chain changes it a bit. But it does come through. So uh, check the reviews. You want really reviews by people who are a bit technical and people who sing as well. They're few and far between, it seems to me, but check them out anyway. Uh, start to listen and train your ears. It's the kind of things you might not have been listening to before, but would have been influencing you perhaps because you've been hearing them, but maybe not consciously. So start to train your ears. Oh, yeah, I like that. Well, that's very sweet in the treble. That's a fascinating one, sweet treble. Why is a treble sweet? Things are revealing stuff up there. Why would one sound sweet and the other not? For sure there's reasons, but it gets very, very, very complex. But anyway, get, get used to that kind of stuff. Audition with headphones or a PA and record what you've done. Then go away, listen to the recording. Hmm. So that's uh, a good way as well. How does it feel? When I, when I say that, in this instance, I mean, how does it respond? Because that affects your singing. This is actually subtle, but actually I think pretty significant uh guitar players are known many to like valve amps still you know that transistors and digital modeling for a long time now which are arguably more reliable in the short term perhaps uh but 
the valve amplifier that when you ask some guitarists to say, well, it's the way it feels. But the guitar is the same guitar. How can, the, how can it feel different? It's obviously not the guitar. But it's when you hit the string, it's the way the amp generates that sound. Is there a slight lag? Is there a sort of slight swell? Is there a compression? Is there a kind of bounce to it? There seems to be. And people say transistor amps are flatter. The more di digital modeling ones, they're trying to copy that and so on. But whatever. But I've noticed the same thing with microphones. And, of course, the amps you put the mic through, so we're not finished. But even with the microphone itself, what some of them cause me to want to play with certain areas, explore certain areas. Some of them, there's no point in me going low because it just kind of sounds like, ah, can only hear what's going on. So it does feed back to your singing, which I think is perhaps more important than is generally recognised, which is why perhaps engineers' reviews of microphones, or I've seen some reviews with engineers and a singer who simply doesn't use a microphone that way. So the, the review is almost, almost worthless, really, I've found, but whatever each to their own. Um, so how does it feel in that sense? What does it make you do as you play with it? How does it feel and look? You know, you may as well have something, it's not a priority, I don't think, but it may as well have a, here's an example, this is the Bayer M88, which is one of my favorites, dynamic hypercardioid. Uh, it's an old one, about 40 years old. Here's a brand new one, well, it's now a couple of years. The older one is better. They sound much the same. This has got near dimming magnets, so it's more powerful. But despite the changes they've made, the actual sound is very, very close. The actual sound, but the sound of the mic itself, this one's got more handling noise than the older one. It's got a tougher grill on the top, but that seems to me to cause more noise in the breath. So, it, so much so that one student refused to use it. And I have to be very careful. It distracts me. I'm being... Of course, this one's on, this one's not. So they sell this. Oh, well, there you go, sorted. But, you know, it's all to one side because it's been the case. And I don't really want a furry condom on top of my mic. It's okay like that. Not a big deal, I'll use it, but you may as well have something that you feel... You like you like when you pick it up. It makes you feel good. You sort of like the look of it. I do like it like that, but not with the the uh, addition. So uh, that's a small point, maybe. And finally, I've got yeah. So what, what what should you do? I think really, unless you've um, you've come accustomed to this, you can spend a lot of money. <laughs> and I would say buy a second hand to begin with a recommended microphone, and then start to get to know, and then you can maybe borrow other people's. Then at least when you got used to that one, say you bought an SM58 second hand, about 40 pounds maybe. Doesn't matter if it's beat up, you can get a new top. Uh, then when you got used to that, you could then maybe try a Bayer Dynamic, uh, Dynamic mic, and then you might try, maybe not this one, it's a DPA de facto, it's a bit pricey, but there are some others. There's some Sennheiser and stuff which are uh, condenser mics. And then you'll start to see, ah, oh, yeah. Okay, now I've got a little bit of a picture. You might like your SM58. You might like the condenser. I think, wow. You might like the shaping of the Bayer Dynamic dynamic. You might like a different shore. You might like the Beta A. You might like their new KSM8. But you've got to start somewhere and you've got to accept that it, it, you've got to train yourself a little bit and get used to these things. And then you can kind of settle down on pretty much as I have, I think. I mean, I'm trying loads, but pretty much I've settled down. I kind of know what I like. That might change, but for now. So that's my advice to you. And um, I hope these videos I'm doing will be of some use. I'm going to review these mics. It'll always be my voice, of course, and my interpretation. But hopefully it'll be of some use to you and you'll be able to uh, kind of narrow down your your perfect mic, just a little bit, I hope. See you later.